Hello and welcome to the Pride of India show. Our guest today is Srinivas Tamath, Director at Natural Size Cream. This Indian brand was launched first at Juhu Beach of Mumbai way back in 1994. Since then, it has grown into a pan-India chain with more than 135 or more stores, I guess. Welcome to the show, Mr. Srinivas Tamath. Thanks, Kanchan. Pleasure to have you here. Please take us through the initial journey of Naturals. So, uh, Naturals was started by my father. Uh, way back in 84 and uh, before that he was uh, uh, working with his elder brother in uh, Santa Cruz area of Mumbai. Uh, uh, my my elder, my Taoji or my dad's elder brother was running a restaurant. So uh, it was a Udupi restaurant. We all, we came from uh, Mangalore. So that was a speciality. And uh, so he got married. He was expecting, an, uh, uh, you know, his first child. So it was a moment where, you know, he thought like, you know, I should be starting something of my own. And uh, since he was already interacting with uh, a lot of the customers and, you know, uh, uh, and, and being in the restaurant industry, he uh, sensed that, you know, uh, there's going to be a huge demand for ice creams in uh, coming years. And that's how the idea uh, sort of came into his, uh, uh, to his mind. But what he wanted to do was something very different. Like, you know, there were other ice cream parlors, but he wanted to uh, concentrate on uh, natural offerings when i say natural offering is like you know fruits milk you know uh, whatever the combination of uh, without adding any additives uh, chemicals or uh, any any artificial flavor so that's that's how he, he started um, and um, and it's very interesting how he decided to uh, find the location like you know very close to jew beach like you know that time there were no malls there were no uh, shopping complexes so a lot of people for the entertainment people used to only go to jew beaches or at the, at the most watch movies. And uh, there was a kind of a, a culture where, you know, people used to have early dinner, like let's say seven o'clock, and then used to go out and eat, uh, you know, the fast food items. That's quick. And and that's where he concentrated on, you know, opening somewhere where already the customers were already there. And uh, that's how uh, we, we decided upon opening in June. Mm -hmm. What were your initial challenges? Well, for us, uh, the most difficult part was that, you know, all these, uh, 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 you know, fruits that we selected, uh, like be it sitafal, the custard apple or sharifa is called in North. Uh, there were no, um, you know, uh, as such technology where you could deceive the fruit. So you had to use only your manual, your, you have to use your hands to do it. So it was very tedious. It was very uh, taking a lot of time. And, uh, you know, that time uh, there were only five or six people, including my mom, my grandmother also used to help, uh, you know, my dad in uh, uh, setting up the kitchen, uh, de-seeding the fruits, peeling the fruits. And uh, that was the initial challenge to find the technology, like, you know, to sort of, even when there was demand for our ice creams, we could not scale up as much as we wanted. Uh, slowly by, you know, uh, he, uh, my dad had to sort of use his engineering mind, though he was, uh, he's a 10th dropout, but he was always fascinated by engineering and, you know, uh, inspired by a lot of the, uh, but there was, there were a lot of factories around uh, uh, in, in, in Andheri area and, and this thing. So he used to always go take inspiration from whatever technology he could. And uh, yeah, he used some jugad to, you know, every, every stage of his life to uh, find solution to unique challenges that we had. And uh, that's why we were able to scale up. So that was the initial challenge. Like, you know, how, how do we uh, meet the demand of the customers? Like, you know, and being a, a frozen product, you had to ensure that the ice cream consistency remains uh, the same throughout its shelf life. What wonderful jugad he had. <laughs> So over the years, how have you connected with your consumers? I mean, word of mouth was one of them. Yeah. What else? Uh, see, for us, uh, you know, uh, the only uh, avenue was our stores, you know, to connect with our customers. Like, you know, uh, because uh, uh, we didn't have any uh, uh, a marketing budget or where we wanted to uh, spread awareness. So, and luckily what happened was the word of mouth publicity worked very well for us. So we had uh, celebrities coming into our store. So that acted itself uh, like a mini celeb haunt. Like, you know, people used to, uh, like, you know, they knew they get a naturalized star. So that was the, uh, uh, the, the first initial boost that we got, like, you know, from the customer. And of course, the product spoke for itself. 
and you know we didn't have to uh, you know release multiple ads or uh, create awareness uh, our customers just spread spread the word for us mm-hmm. please tell us about your most popular advertising campaigns in recent years yeah so uh, interestingly um, i at the most uh, the one that i can recall is uh, the one that when we o- we were opening in uh, delhi uh, we had a nice built up you know towards uh, uh, creating the hype like you know we didn't uh, straight away announce that we are opening so just maybe one or two months back uh, before opening uh, first store in delhi uh, we had wrapped up the entire store um and and you know this is around 2014 so you know the social media was already at peak you know the influencer marketing was already at peak so a lot of the influencers uh, and, and and we didn't have to uh, engage them they self you know uh, w- they were able to promote okay i think nachos is coming to delhi that created a lot of hype and banking on that you know we then when we released the ad uh, uh, next day when op- opening day uh, it it sort of matched you know the hype and the uh, opening day sort of met and you know that 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 gave us amazing response like you know we were uh, uh, we we touched uh, 1 million sales in less than 7 days so it was a record for us for that time that's great <laughs> that's really good so which ad, ad agency do you work with and what was yeah. your expenditure before the pandemic and what is now so uh, we work with a, a very uh, uh, it's a boutique uh, ad agency called drink waters they are also based out of uh, uh, bombay uh, the great thing about them is like you know they uh, it's it's a uh, it's a small team of, of four to five individuals uh with the bus experience by themselves they they also uh, started their journey with us so it's been a close association with them and um, uh, you know for us the marketing budget we roughly uh, uh, uh you know we try to have it less than 2 or 3% of our annual turnover mm-hmm. uh pandemic yes did hit us uh, badly so you know uh, that time we uh, because you know like i said uh, our stores were the way of communication to you know communicating our, our, our whatever story or our philosophy to the customers that was uh, uh, obviously hampered because you know there were restriction in opening hours uh, we were not allowed to open uh, uh, in certain pockets of india where you know where the cases were rising so that took a, uh, you know and we took a austerity call to cut off uh, us, uh, you know our budgets but uh, post second second phase once it did uh, we resumed our what activities that we were doing like what we were, you know our, our, in fact we increased our spends on uh, uh, communicating uh, we uh, the the product ethos like you know the safety of the product because there was misconception around whether ice cream is uh, uh you know can be uh, not not suitable for doing the covid times because it's the you know it's a cold product so we have to create awareness around that we have to build our awareness that you know ice cream is perfectly fine we we make it in a safe environment hygienic environment so that was the bunch of the marketing budget went in creating the those away uh, uh, you know those those awareness Mm-hmm. we see lot many ice cream brands in the market at present so many national international ones yeah who do you see as your biggest competitor uh it, well you know uh, i i i think uh, uh, you know earlier there was a time when you know we used to say uh, baskin robbins amul uh, they were the biggest competitors because they also operated in a, a similar uh, Uh, format like the parlor format like you know like we have we 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 have only have exclusive parlor format we don't sell in mom and pop shows or uh, any supermarkets so we used to see any uh, ice cream brand that into parlor uh, format is a competitor uh, but that has changed uh, drastically over the uh, last two years because not just because of the pandemic but also because uh, the rise of swiggy zomato the online aggregators we've seen a lot of boutique stores opening uh, not necessarily having uh ice cream parlor of their own maybe operating through dark kitchen or cloud kitchen as they call it uh and 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 it's like the small brands now opening in each in pocket of every corners and every area so it's 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 a very interesting time where you know we are facing challenge competition not from big brands but uh, smaller new brands that are coming up in the market so are you planning to change your marketing strategy as you mentioned you operate only through the parlors so yeah. are you are you planning to you know keep your products in in malls yes. yeah uh so the first step has been uh, we already took last year uh, which is like you know uh, unfortunately what had happened was that uh, uh, 
while we were allowed to manufacture ice cream, we were not allowed to sell ice creams because ice cream parlor, people thought it's a restaurant, right? So restaurants were almost, uh, um, you know, they, they were hit hard because of, uh, they were not allowed, uh, walk-in customers were not allowed. You're not allowed to sell customers directly. So we had to sell, we had to find some way out. So we tied up uh, for the first time with uh, Cloud Kitchen Partners. Uh, like right now we are tied up with uh, rebel foods which are uh, you know uh, the the recently they, they also became a unicorn uh, where they operate from uh, cloud kitchens all over india so that was the first step that was something very new for us we uh, we had to take this step otherwise you know uh, we would have been uh, lost amongst the customer like people would not recall us when when things we and we didn't frankly no one would have anticipated uh, how long it's going to be how things are going to be back to normal so that was the first format and yes uh, we though we are not looking at hypermarket uh, or supermarkets right now but we are definitely looking at other online avenues could it it could be uh, like you know in like this uh, swiggy has come up with in smart uh, uh, dunzo as their own uh, you know uh, 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 grocery and ice cream and food related so we are looking at tying up with those channels so our reach increases we are not just only dependent to sell our ice creams to our own stores but we have uh, other avenues to sell our products what are your long term plans uh, shinivas so uh, i would say uh, first thing first uh, you know the uh, the one important lesson that we have learned is to how we mitigate our risk you know in times like this uh, you know uh, we cannot just be only dependent on operating only through our parlor format we have to look other avenues so which is we are actively looking uh, second is to in, uh, increase our footprints uh, across um, you know all over india right now we are heavily concentrated in western and uh, southern region we uh, though we have stores in delhi but we have not even penetrated uh, you know 75% of india so that we want to increase our footprint but that mitigates the risk suppose if there is a curfew or lockdown in one part of india we are not suffered uh, you know if it's not uh, like you know in this case uh, hyderabad was not affected but kerala was very badly affected so we could survive because in either hyderabad market was uh, relatively open so that way we've learned our lessons so we want to uh, increase our footprint that that's the second part and third we want to work on our back end channel very important because uh, it, it it's not just us the manufacturer of ice creams and you know sellers of ice cream are affected even our uh, supply chain uh, our uh, supply partners our vendors are equally affected so we want to work very closely with the partners to ensure that you know there is uh, uh, whatever time, uh, challenge challenging time we we are able to uh, get those raw materials uh, and you know we can uh, uh, cater to the demand what's there in the market any plans to go global not yet but you know as they say never say never so uh, uh, right now we like i said we are not even penetrated 75% of the market so our goal and sole focus is right now uh, expanding in india as much as we can mm-hmm. and though we have uh, tremendous demand we we on on a daily basis we get hundreds of queries uh, you know from dubai singapore uh, america us uh, england so so but yeah we we are quite uh, sure that you know we we want to increase our footprints in india in, in fact right now we are at uh, 138 outlets as we speak uh, our plan is to double that count within next 2 to 3 years Okay. Thanks for taking time out and is speaking with Exchange for Media. Thanks. Great, great. Thanks, Anshan. Take care. Bye. Bye.